Good morning everyone, I'm glad you managed to make it today. I know quite a few of you have been burning the candle at both ends this week, and while that's hardly healthy, I can't exactly hold the high ground on it. I mean, most of these lectures are prepared the night before, but you, you didn't hear that from me. Anyway, this week we'll continue looking at genetic manipulation with the Columbian Vigors found in Bioshock Infinite. Like their plasmid cousins, Vigors grant the users incredible powers and are openly available to members of the public. Unlike plasmids, however, their display bottles are much more lavish, making it abundantly clear which Vigor is being used. Additionally, where plasmids are injected directly into a person's bloodstream, Vigors are drunk, although the adverse effects immediately after ingestion are just as unpleasant. There are many connections that can be drawn between plasmids and vigors, with some even having much the same effect as each other. While it can be chalked up to mere coincidence that both Rapture and Columbia would develop methods of granting their popular superpowers, there is actually a very real connection between them. Utilizing their ability to open interdimensional portals, Columbian scientists explored an array of quantum possibilities, bringing back to the city some of the best technologies the multiverse has to offer. This included the concept of plasmids and the methods to develop them after their creation was witnessed in an alternate reality version of Rapture itself. In Columbia's own reality, expeditions were made to the Atlantic seafloor in order to obtain the sea slugs required to produce the raw atom needed to produce plasmids. Columbia's research took a slightly different path to Rapture's, however, and an ingestible variant of the plasmid-like serum was produced, subsequently named Vigors. Diverging further from their initial inspiration, the atom used to generate vigors seems to be harvested directly from the sea slugs, rather than using anything akin to the little sisters to increase output. Because of this, the cost of expeditions to gather the slugs quickly outweighed the profits of the vigors' otherwise successful marketing, leading to the consideration of shifting the vigors' makeup to a direct copy of the plasmids, syringes and all. This had not occurred by the time of Columbia's downfall, however, so drinkable vigors, with their uniquely styled bottles, are still prevalent. Like plasmids, vigors required a form of fuel in the form of salts in order to use their abilities, and like plasmids, vigors are highly addictive, leading to mental instability and eventual madness in their users. While there are 8 known vigors native to Columbia itself, there are 11 in all, with an additional 3 available as so-called drinkable plasmids in Rapture, but for the sake of argument, can be considered basically vigors. The Columbian vigors are Buck and Bronco, an ability that can levitate foes, Charge, which as the name suggests, allows a user to quickly charge and tackle someone with great force, Devil's Kiss, which allows its user to cast fireballs from their hands, Murder of Crows, that commands numerous crows to descend on a target, presumably pecking them to death, Possession, that can allow the control of machines and, if upgraded, humans, there is also Return to Sender, which can cast a shield or deflect incoming fire back at the target, Shock Jockey, that lets you cast lightning from your hands, and Undertow, that pushes numerous targets back with the slap of a giant tentacle. Additionally, the unique vigor like plasmids found in Rapture are Old Man Winter, that lets you cast ice balls from your hands, Peeping Tom, that lets a user sense nearby foes, or even gain invisibility once charged. Finally, there is Iron Size, which functions effectively the same as Return to Sender, but merges its standard and charged effects. The charged effects can be seen on most vigors, which typically manifest as the ability to increase the power of or place a trap with the ability of the utilized vigor. Firstly, if you want any information on the way in which vigors function, please refer to lecture notes from our previous lesson on plasmids, as they effectively work the same. Just like plasmids though, vigors are impressive, but they are freely available to any member of the public to purchase and use, meaning that their impressiveness is somewhat diminished. The fact that Columbia was able to mimic the creation of plasmids just goes to show that, with sufficient research, they're not difficult to produce. Also, bear in mind that there are many other realities investigated by Columbia that have also mastered vigor or plasmid technology, placing it as a highly abundant commodity in the multiverse. And it's for this reason that vigors have been given the artifact rating, just like plasmids, of no worthy. I know that there were quite a few people questioning the rating of plasmids, and I'm sure I'll get the same queries about vigors, but when they're looked into, we honestly can't give them anything higher. Although saying that, I've seen a few of those SCP Foundation people hanging around campus and even in our lecture notes. I'm not 100% sure on what they do, but from what I've heard, we don't want to mess with them. So if you do notice some ratings abruptly change, then I'd say just go along with it, because they're probably the reason. Anyways, as always, subscribe for more lecture material and support the course on Patreon if you want. Stay safe out there and I'll see you all back here next week.